So in 2017, Adidas released a new product, and it was a product unlike anything they'd ever made before because it was a shoe that was totally 3D printed. So in this video, we're gonna go through where that shoe came from, why it was significant, and why today there's been hundreds of thousands of them sold. So the shoe in question was the Adidas Futurecraft 4D, but before we get to that, we want to go back just a little bit further to the guy who kind of brought it about. This guy's name was Marco Corman. Marco Corman was the director of future technology innovation at Adidas. He was an ex-mechanical engineer who was basically responsible for figuring out what were the new technologies coming down the pipe. Now, this was 2014, 2015, one of the new technologies that everybody was looking at was 3D printing. But there was a problem with 3D printing. They had looked at all of it and none of it was really able to do what they needed. It wasn't able to hit the scale and it wasn't able to hit the design requirements that shoes needed as far as recyclability and long-term durability. But Corman was keeping track of it because there were several advantages that 3D printing could give to them. Because prior to this time, shoes were just really, really slow to iterate and Adidas was only able to make basically two attempts at a new product in a 12 month period before they had to move on to the next project. So they were looking for something that was faster, more affordable, and more flexible. 3D printing seemed to fit that bill if it could be cleaned up. So in order to start testing, Corman released 300 pairs of the Futurecraft 3D. These were an SLS printed set of shoes that they lost money on every single pair of. But they were a proof of concept that proved that they could make a shoe with 3D printing, but they needed to find a 3D printing process that could hit the scale that they needed with the materials that they actually wanted. And this came about in about 2016, 2017, when Corman was browsing through LinkedIn and he saw a video from a company called Carbon 3D. At this time, Carbon 3D was valued at about 500 million to a billion dollars, and they had released a new type of 3D printing technology called digital light synthesis, which was basically a resin printing tech. It looked to be really fast and it looked to be capable of creating what might have looked like a shoe sole. So Corman reached out, and they ended up collaborating to create the Futurecraft 4D. The Futurecraft was Adidas' internal incubator for new technologies, and the 4D was a reference to the extra data that Adidas was using inside of these shoes. They didn't simply design a sole. They went ahead and took about 10 years of running an athletic data and used it to basically generate a shoe sole that would be comfortable, but also have a performance that no one had ever been able to get out of a piece of rubber before. And it immediately solved a problem for them because through the iteration of the Futurecraft 4D and then next year the Alpha Edge 4D that they introduced, they realized that they had solved the problems with molding. Rather than having two iterations in a year from an injection molded design, they were actually able to have 50 iterations, one per week by using 3D printing. So they were able to get much closer to a perfect product than had ever been possible before and were able to try options that had never had time to be tried before. With the release of the Alpha Edge, they were officially in business. And in 2018, Carbon 3D announced that they had expected to produce about 100,000 shoes for Adidas in that year. And at this time, Carbon 3D was worth almost $1.5 to $2 billion, a significant uptick from a couple years before when they were just a 3D printing company. Now they were helping one of the largest shoe companies on the planet make their shoes. And they were making real shoes too. These were not experiments. These were not proof of concepts. They had passed that in 2016 and 2017. Now they were mass producing real shoes which were being sold for about $300. So they were premium shoes for sure, but they were very comfortable and they did have the 3D printing brand recognition, but they were also creating a capability that had never existed before and they were not hitting the huge mass scale of shoes that would get below $100. Now, as far as why these shoes were interesting from an engineering perspective, Carbon 3D threw a number of interesting features at these. Number one, since they were 3D printed, they were able to create an impossible geometry, a lattice, which every 3D printing technology can make and no other manufacturing technology can. But they allows them to basically tweak and tune the entire area of the midsole so that the heel is stiffer, the toes are softer, or vice versa. And they were able to design a proprietary new 
form cell lattice design, which allowed them to convert the impact on the foot into forward motion so that they became a very comfortable and very efficient type of running shoe. And the lattice itself in one of these midsoles was composed of almost 10,000 separate struts, which was just so fantastically complex that no one could have even conceived of making something like that before. But 3D printing was able to make it very easily. All of these advantages became very clear. Even though there was initial pullback on the project in about 2019, 2018, when Adidas was kind of ramping down experimental projects, the 4D series continued on and made its way into other products. After the Alpha Edge, there was the Adidas 4D in Parley. Pharrell Williams had a custom shoe made out of it. Then there was the Ultra 4D and then the Future Craft relaunch. And now today you can buy the Adidas 4D FWD for about $200 and it comes in all sorts of different colors. So it is not a project that died or was forgotten. It is a project that is growing and is successful. This is such a fantastic example of how 3D printing can create a product that is completely new and completely different from what has ever existed before. Yes, there are the manufacturing advantages of being able to iterate and not being restricted to molds and being able to reduce shipping because you can make products more locally. But it's also just the fact that 3D printing enabled a new type of design, a new type of feature that had never been possible before. And Adidas is one of the only companies truly capitalizing on this so that they can disseminate it amongst their other products as they find out how to really use it and what those core advantages of the product design are. Now the downsides. These shoes are great, they're amazing, they're an awesome demonstration of a real 3D printed product out there in the world but not everything about them is totally perfect. First of all, since they are a resin-based 3D printed system, they're not really able to have large enclosed volumes because you'd have resin stuck inside of it or you'd make a heavy part. Since these soles have to be made with a lattice in order to get the rebound performance that they want, they have to have this lattice be open because if they put a skin around the outer side, the inside would be filled up with the liquid that was not hardened, which is not an option for this project. So they have to have an exposed lattice, which means that these running shoes are gonna be filled with all kinds of dirt and gravel after just a couple of days of use. Now that does mean that you can throw them into a washer and wash them, but it's not ideal because you would like the shoes to kind of be self-protecting the way a normal foam sole kind of is. But that's not really a problem with 3D printing, it's just a problem with the resin process itself. If they use something like FDM, that type of enclosure would be possible. The other issue is, is since Adidas is working with Carbon in a very successful partnership, they are restricted to Carbon's materials. Carbon uses a proprietary printing process called digital light synthesis, which requires a type of resin that is not necessarily common. So Adidas is locked into the material ecosystem that Carbon is able to create, which means that it's just going to be more expensive because Carbon only has access to the Adidas shoes and their other clients. So there is only one company that has to hit economies of scale in order to make this really scalable. If Adidas had used some other type of 3D printing, like in our case, we're gonna use the FDM process with our large print farms. If they had gone that direction, they would have been able to leverage the entire injection molding supply chain, just convert it into 3D printing. So that way they could use materials like standard TPU and other sorts of recyclables, and they wouldn't be locked into a more expensive kind of proprietary batch of materials that have a limited amount of scale because there's only one company that really knows the formula for producing them. And lastly, one of the problems that they have is just color. The urethane resin that carbon produces is restricted to a single color. All resin printing is restricted to very few colors. There's not 50 different vats of resin that can be made in blue and pink and so on and so forth. So even though shoes are meant to be personalized, they're not able to change color as easily as other printing processes are able to. We are able to get basically any Pantone that you can request, whereas resin printers are restricted really to kind of baseline colors because adding in different colors changes how the light hardens the material, also changes the performance of the material itself. So these are the downsides of the engineering of the project, but the product is still sound and still works fine. They design it around those limitations and it's a good performing product that people really enjoy and continue to purchase, which is why it still exists. But it's always good to look at this because it is an excellent example of a product that has hit a mass market category and continues to grow. It's also giving Adidas a competitive advantage over other companies who are not really leaning into printing at the same level because Adidas is going to know how to use this process to create really unique products and everyone else is gonna be figuring out where to find cheaper labor. 
Hope you guys all enjoyed that video. It's been really fun to dig into these real 3D printed product stories and the 4D is one of the kind of pinnacles of that example because it is such a success story. Comment down below if there's other 3D printed products that you'd like us to cover and kind of dig into about both the engineering and the advantages that it offers. And of course, subscribe to the channel so that you can get all these videos into the future. Have a great day, everybody.